everyone welcome back to my channel or hi if you're new my name is Jenna but you guys can call me Jen and today I'm coming at you with a really fun uh, vlog that I've been planning to do for a long time and that is rereading the Percy Jackson series and finally reading the fifth book because I have not done that yet um, but yeah I wanted to kind of do this vlog series because I thought it'd be interesting to see how I feel about these books after reading them for the first time in high school, I was not the kind of person who read these. I was not that that kid who read these um, as well as Harry Potter when they were younger. I didn't actually know about them for a long time until I was in high school, really. So I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> I guess that's all I can really say. So I'm really excited to read them again and to finally finish the series. But anyways, I am very excited to start this. So I'm going to get reading and I'm going to take you along with me. Percy Jackson, the first one, and I just wanted to come in with my thoughts. I adore being back in this world so much. Uh, I ended up writing down, um, I just need to remember my page number, I um, remember writing down a little thing right at the beginning, and I was going to try to do that throughout the rest, and I just haven't, but I remember my thoughts, so that's fine. So, in the first 75 pages, here are my thoughts. I didn't remember Sally Jackson was a novelist, which is incredible, like, we stan Sally Jackson. At least she was, like, a novelist that, like, she wanted to be a novelist, but she just couldn't because, like, you know, money and stuff, and I'm like, oh, we relate. I also really enjoy the portrayal of myth in this story because after coming off of uh, uni, and I have studied uh, ancient Greece and Rome and mythology specifically in uni and seeing it in here in the way it's portrayed is like eerily accurate but also like with a spin of like of hilarity on it which I really enjoy like the whole I ugh, there's so many parts of this I just adore and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't like read anything but like honestly at this point you're gonna get spoiled I'm gonna be talking about all five books so like <laughs> welcome um I just I adore I adore this book so much. <laughs> um, another concept that I really enjoyed was that like the whole Olympus, Mount Olympus follows where the power is in the world, which is so cool. I adore that like kind of reference and I thought it was really in interesting and really intelligent of a way for Rick Riordan to make, sen make it make sense that it's in America um, and also that it makes sense as to why like even though we don't no, no longer believe in the in the Greek gods, it's that we still kind of like build monuments t to them throughout the world. Like his examples in here, I can't remember remember quite all of them, but like the whole like Greek architecture and like the columns and stuff has still followed us no matter where we are. I don't know. I re I really enjoy the little like pieces of almost proof that this this book could be real in a way and honestly if I had read this at like age 9 or 10 or even 12 if I was Percy's age I would have laughed it up and would have just been like this is real like I really want to believe this okay anyways I am just about to be done as I said so I'm going to finish that up and then come in with my final thoughts <laughs> story it gets me every time oh my gosh I just I adore these characters so much and just the witty writing is so good and I really need to go start reading the second one because like I want to keep this ball rolling I also really like the intricacies of the story and can we talk about homegirl Sally freezing her husband so she doesn't have to deal with him anymore like getting rid of him oh my god I mean like badass to the max 
And there's also, like, I just, I flagged a line that I wanted to read from this book before I just oozed my love for it. As I walked back through the city of the gods, conversation stopped. The muses paused their concert. People and satyrs and naiads all turned toward me, their faces filled with respect and gratitude, and as I passed, they knelt, as if I were some kind of hero. Percy, you are a hero. You are literally, like, a demigod. You're a hero, like, by definition. Oh, but, like, I adore this entire plot. I adore the storyline. I adore every single one of the characters. And I remember when I first read this, the little betrayal at the end. The little betrayal. The betrayal, like, right at the end, when Percy gets, like, bit by the... Or stung when Luke pulls that bullshit on Percy and like tries to kill him with a scorpion first of all how cowardly second of all when I first read this like, I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe that I didn't see that coming uh but now I could now um because I knew it was him so like there, there's like not many hints to it throughout this entire thing but like out of everybody, it could only really be him. Yeah, this gets a definite five stars for me. Definite five stars. I cannot wait to go pick up the next one. Ah! <laughs>
I wrote, I love the references to the Odyssey because this entire book is basically like an, an ode to the Odyssey. Um, if you don't know, the Odyssey is a story about Odysseus who is coming home from the Trojan War with a bunch of his men and it takes him 10 years to get home because the gods keep throwing stuff at him. And one of the main, like a few of the things that he goes through are Scylla and Charybdis, the two monsters that guard the sea of monsters. Um, he goes through Circe, which that part in this book is my, like one of my favorite parts ever. I like, I adore, I just, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the, um, his meeting with, um, Polyphemus, and there's a bit on page 121 that I missed the first time I read this because I wasn't quite as like into the story like into the Odysseus story um but it was just like <laughs> um Annabeth volunteered to go alone since she had the cap of invisibility but I convinced her it was too dangerous either we all went to bed all went together or nobody went and like Tyson goes nobody Tyson voted please <laughs> And I know, like, the whole play, like, what Odysseus did to trick Polyphemus in the first one is he told, he said, Polyphemus, like, my name is nobody. I'm nobody. So, like, I like that subtle, subtle nod. <laughs> uh, what else is there? I believe there's just a few more things on my lovely little, where did it go? <laughs> oh, I wrote Rainbow, the hippocampus, Idor, and it just reminds, like, it just, Tyson in here is precious. I remember being kind of annoyed by him when I was younger because he is kind of childlike, but I think because Rick Riordan tries so hard to include all kinds of representation with his, um, like the disabilities and the mental disabilities and then the physical disabilities with Grover and then Tyson, who is just a little bit of a, a slower guy and he's just like, he's different, right? And I mean, yeah, he's a Cyclops, but like in the beginning, it's just Percy being like sticking up for this guy who's just different. And I'm like, oh, I adore, I adore the disability rep in these books, even if they eventually turn into monsters, but like, he's a good monster. Tyson's a sweetheart. Anyways, I am going to keep reading. I think I lost my page, but I'm gonna keep reading. <laughs> And I will catch up with you guys probably tomorrow because it is already 10.30 and I don't know if I'm going to finish tonight, but I will try. I will try. But yeah. Thursday. It's now August 8th. Um, I've come down with a cold. I realized that um, this book, I didn't really like it as much as the other ones that I read when I first read this series, so I'm like kind of wary about it because I know what happens, um, and it's just not one of my favorites. I really was not that happy when this, this was the first book that when one of the campers die. I guess she's not really technically a camper. She's um, a hunter, but she's like a demigod, and I was really sad that she died, and I also was like, I like Nico, but like, not enough in this series, I heard he gets better, I heard he also gets like, broodier and more emotional, which is like, typical of Kid of Hades, right, but I also really don't like Talia, um, she bothers me a lot, because she's also, she's like Percy, but like, amped up to 10, and like, moody, you know, and I really don't like that Annabeth isn't in it, like, for most of it. I'm like, no, come on, Annabeth is one of my favorite characters. So, I don't know, That's that was me from before. Um, just from where I'm at now, I can see 
um, Percy getting a little bit older, which is kind of nice. I mean, like, he's 13 in this. Percy just can't not do anything. And it gets worse as, he, as he's a teenager because he's like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but, like, I'm going to do it anyways. And I'm like, bro, don't. Uh. <laughs> but besides the point, I still really enjoy these books. I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy this book more. I will update you as I get further into book three. <laughs> And another one bites the dust. <laughs> it is 20 to 1 in the morning. I don't know why I did this to myself, but I wanted to finish this book in one night. So, that means <laughs> number 3 is done. Um, I didn't like it as much as number 1 and 2, but I still like it a lot. And I think I like it more than I did when I first read it. But, I hope the 4th and then the 5th are even better. So... I'm going to put this back on my shelf, and then I'm going to go to bed. It's like 9-11 p.m. and I am in my room now because the light in the sunroom got too low to be able to read. So I came downstairs because I have my light here and I have things. I have my tea I made myself. I think it's my third cup of tea today because like cold and then I got myself some ice cream and I put some like hundreds and thousands on it. I love it. I'm so excited. So excited for that ice cream and I am now... Uh, about halfway through, I'm on page 188 of The Battle of the Labyrinth, and this is taking such an upturn from um, the Titan's Curse, in my opinion. I am loving this lot a lot more. Um, I remember liking it back when I first read it, but like, I'm, lo I'm loving this one um, almost as much so far as Sea of Monsters. So this is good. Um, this is probably going to be my third favorite or my second favorite if it keeps going um, the way it's going. I'm really, really enjoying the element of the labyrinth in this one. Um, I really love the Daedalus myth um, and the story of the Minotaur, but I like the Daedalus part of it uh, the best because who wanted, who likes the birth of the Minotaur? That's kind of strange. Um, but I remember when I read Circe, um, that came into play, but this didn't, like, the, the maze didn't really come into play as much, but Daedalus did, and I really enjoyed that part of it. I'm continuously impressed at how Rick Riordan can take a really serious situation, like a battle, and just, like, throw humor at it. Like, the whole, um, uh, when... Yeah, when um, Campe is chasing them after being in Alcatraz, um, when they find Briares, Bri Briares, Briares, the hundred-handed man, um, when they find him, I really enjoyed the part where um, it's just, like, it's so serious, and they're running for their lives, and then, like, Tyson's like, I will help you, and then there's, like, the, just the description of Campe. Yeah, this part made me laugh so hard. I was like... As we sprinted for the cell blocks, the last thing I saw was Tyson picking up a dip and dot stand and throwing it at Kampe. Ice cream and poison exploded everywhere, all the little snakes in Kampe's hair dotted with tutti frutti. We dashed back into the jail yard, like, <laughs> just like, dotted with tutti frutti, like, I love, I love, I, yeah, I love the humor in these books so much. And I am going to continue reading this now. I do. I just had to come in here because I just, I'm reading more of this and I just, page 203, when Annabeth and Percy are in Hephaestus' forge that's being taken over by the Telkines. <sighs> when they have to split up, I'm just screaming. My heart is so full right now. 
Annabeth glared at me like she was going to punch me, and then she did something that surprised me even more. She kissed me. Be careful, seaweed brain. She put on her hat and vanished. I probably would have sat there for the rest of the day staring at the lava and trying to remember what my name was, but the sea demons dragged me back to reality. Like, <laughs> Percabeth is forever. <laughs> Guys, I finished the Battle of the Labyrinth. And I'm so emotional about it. This one, number four, is going to be my favorite Percy Jackson book. It has surpassed The Lightning Thief, you guys. I don't think I've ever come across a book. I didn't think this was going to happen, but it has. Anyways. Oh, this one was fantastic. Just the complexities of using the labyrinth and then having, like, Percy with his, like, personal troubles with, like, Annabeth and Rachel in the mix and then Nico is becoming better. I like him a lot more in this one. <sighs> and then Daedalus. Oh my god. What a cool character. <sighs> but yes. 10 out of 10. I'm like, go Grover for saving the day. So that means, you guys, that I only have one Percy Jackson book left. I have The Last Olympian. I'm on this precipice and I was here the last time I read Percy Jackson. So here's the deal. I've never read The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. This is the one Percy Jackson book that I've never read in the original series. Um, I've read any of the other series either because I haven't read this one. <laughs> so, And you have to read them in order because they all go together. But like, I was here the last time I finished um, The Battle of the Labyrinth. I was so pumped to get started, but then, I was like, but, 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 that means it's done, and I don't want it to be done, but I also don't want to, like, brood on this for too long, because if I do, I know I'm never going to pick it up, so that's why I'm making myself free to join this readathon. That's fun. Also, I am now, <laughs> I don't even know how many pages in, 44 pages in, and I did not realize that Rachel was going to be, like, a thing with Percy, and I'm so mad. <laughs> No! We want Annabeth and Percy to be together, and I can't wait for that to happen, but, like, Rachel needs to leave. Uh, uh, does it not happen in this series? Am I just, like... Because uh, it was so cute in the last book. Anyways, I need to stop talking and start actually reading. Hey, guys. So I'm back in my bedroom, because it's now... Almost 10.30, about 10.30, what time is it? 10.24. <laughs> um, and I am at the page 198 mark of Last Olympians. I have this much left to go. Ah, oh, I have feelings about this one. And it's mostly just, wow, this feels so much older than the first few. And having read all these in like one fell swoop very quickly, one after the other, it's a lot to like take in, you know, because Percy is 16 in this, almost like a few days from being 16. Um, he's like kissed two girls, he's got girl trouble, but then he's also like made the decision to uh, dip himself into the river Styx and basically become immortal. Or not immortal. Invulnerable, except for like the small of his back, which smart choice, but also really bad choice. <laughs> Cause homie's gonna go down somehow because like everybody keeps like going, Oh, you have the curse of Achilles and I'm just like, um Achilles was killed by like a nick to his ankle, so like any little pain to the small of his back could kill him. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about my children because <laughs> they're in the middle of a battle and Annabeth is like very close to death but not because you know Apollo has great healers but like <sighs> it's stressful that's all I can say is this book is stressful there's not as much humor behind everything and I think I need that <laughs> I need the humor to get me through this
Maybe I'm just missing it because I'm so stressed, but I will update you later. <laughs>